Tim, we're in the Hooniverse garage tonight working on the Wagoneer. So old cars, Jeeps in particular, leak oil. Um, my Wagoneer, it leaks a little bit too much oil. I went through and I looked for all the sources of the leaks and it turns out where most of it's coming from is the intake manifold, specifically the intake manifold gasket. So what I'm working on tonight is I gotta take the intake manifold off, uh, put a new gasket down, seal everything back up, bolt it back up, and hopefully it stays leak free. So basically to get the intake manifold done, you gotta take all the stuff off the top of the engine. That means a bunch of vacuum lines, the carburetor, the distributor, and a coolant hose or two. So the first thing you need to do is drain out all the coolant out of the bottom of the radiator and make sure that it's all the way drained. After you drain the coolant, the next thing we gotta do is take all the stuff off the top of the engine. So that means distributor, vacuum lines, carburetor, a couple of coolant hoses, and anything else that might be in the way. With everything out of the way, you can unbolt and then attempt to lift up the intake manifold. As a caution, a cast iron intake manifold is a very, very heavy thing. Usually it helps to have two people to do this, but sometimes that's a luxury we can't afford. With the intake manifold out of the way, the next thing we gotta do is scrape clean all of the mating surfaces between the manifold and the heads and the block. I like to use a razor to do this rather than a wire brush or a rag. A wire brush can leave behind little metal uh, brush fiber things and those are really really bad for your engine. And then the razor is a lot more effective than just using a rag to scrape off silicone off of these surfaces. We got to make sure to get all of the parts of the head and the block as well as the underside of the intake manifold. With everything scraped off then you got to wipe down all the surfaces with a really good solvent, something like kerosene or acetone. Today I'm using MEK, which is pretty serious stuff. You usually wanna use this in an area with good ventilation. With everything nice and clean, the next thing you can do is get your favorite brand of RTV or gasket maker and ring around each of the water jacket holes as well as the corners where the block and the head meet. With your first layer in place, then you're gonna lay the intake manifold gasket in place. The Wagoneer has a valley pan gasket where the two sides are joined together. Sometimes you have it where each side is its own little cork rubber piece. With the gasket in place, the next thing you have to do is run a bead across the front and the rear of the block, as well as once again around each of the coolant passageways. And once you have all your gasket material in place, you need to work quickly so the stuff doesn't set up too hard. and then heave the intake manifold back into place. When you put the intake manifold into place, you need to work really, really hard to kind of just drop it right in the spot it's gonna go. You don't wanna slide it into place because that's gonna smear all of your gaskets around and make them a lot less effective and potentially leak some of that stuff down into the engine or into a water jacket or somewhere you don't want it to be. Once it's in place, then it's just a matter of dropping the bolts in, getting it torqued down, and putting everything back together. Some cars have a specific order that you're supposed to tighten up all the bolts in. The Jeep, it doesn't really matter because it's a cast iron intake on cast iron heads on a cast iron block, so it's not too sensitive to it. We let this one sit overnight to let the gaskets fully cure. This morning, now what we need to do is fill the radiator back up with coolant and double check everything's in place correctly. We'll fire it up, we'll look for leaks, and we should be ready to roll. Kind of. Okay, just check it out. It's 2015 and you don't always need to rely on a manual anymore. 
on almost any car, you can go look up whatever you're stumped by on the internet. Frequently, there's stuff on YouTube where there's a video of the job that you're doing. In our case, we happen to find a video from our friends at Scared Shiftless on their recommendations for how to have a leak-free intake manifold. I took some time to soak that up just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes.